Hello everyone. I'm starting to work on the solar and getting it mounted on the uh, camper. So let me show you what I got going on here. I've got my solar panel here. This is a solar panel that I took off of the camper that we sold that was up on our property that we also sold. And I just have it here in this in the house right now so I can just show this to you while I work on this <clears throat> these are the rent it's a Renogy 100 watt 12 volt panel and they actually I when I bought the panel I bought these Renogy mounts and they're pretty nice they just go on the side like this bolt to one of these holes and then you've got two holes here for mounting it to uh, whatever surface you're going to mount it to and there's four of them one on one goes on each corner basically and it's held on with a quarter inch stainless steel bolt and nut so what I'm gonna do is uh, I went down to the hardware store and I bought eight foot piece actually I bought three of them eight foot piece of this is one sixteenth inch by one inch angle aluminum I was gonna get the 1 8 inch thick but uh, it was almost twice the price and I determined my my guess is uh, 16 inch is gonna be thick enough so then I cut it into almost two foot sections that will span across the back of the solar panel and then I did a bunch of measuring and put a bunch of holes in it so I've got a hole in it on each end and it's also rounded on one side and then some holes on the other this is actually two part deal this is one part so these are going to mount on the panel itself through these holes right here I'll just put those on there with some washers and some stainless steel bolts and I'm going to use nylon lock nuts and bolt two of these to each panel, one on each side, like I have that one down there. And then mounted to the camper will be the other half of the system. So I have four holes in one edge. That's going to be screwed to the roof of the camper. And then two holes, one on each end of this other piece. So this one will be mounted on the camper. like that and then these holes right here on the end will match up and we'll have a bolt right in there so what that will do is all with this edge rounded off as I'm designing these so that I can use them as tilt mounts whether I'll ever actually do that or not I don't think I will have to but just in case I need to they're already designed to be able to do that <clears throat> So I can undo one bolt and it will pivot on the other bolt and be able to tilt in either direction. And the only thing that I'll have to do to make that happen is pull out one bolt on each mount. So I went to the hardware store and I bought one quarter by three quarter stainless steel hex bolts some uh, quarter inch stainless steel flat washers quarter by 20 nylon lock nuts these were the most expensive they were just about six and a half dollars for 40 of them there's 36 bolts and 59 washers and I think that's enough to do I, I'm gonna make I made enough mounts to do three mounts because I have three solar panels two that are on the van that I'll be removing here shortly and then one this one here that I took off the camper we had up on our property so I'm going to be able to put 300 watts on top of our new fifth wheel camper and that's what I'm designing it to do now you can buy these tilt mounts they're for sale on Amazon and everywhere else the cheapest I saw was 50 bucks for a tilt mount kit 
that'll do one panel. Fifty dollars. So if if you bought the cheapest ones you could find, it would take me a hundred cost me a hundred and fifty dollars to do three solar panels just with the mount kits. All this hardware that I bought, the aluminum, all the stainless steel hardware cost me sixty dollars and that's enough to do three panels. One eight foot piece of this angle iron will do one solar panel. You need four pieces. One that goes on the camper, one that goes on the uh, panel, and on both sides. So four pieces that are approximately a little bit less than two feet across this panel. And the panel is four feet long. So for 60 bucks, I'll save myself uh, at a minimum of a hundred and uh, what, hundred and forty dollars or so, or not four hundred and forty, hundred and ten. Uh, wow, public math. Let's see, one fifty minus sixty, so ninety, ninety bucks. It's going to be just a little more than that if I decide to go ahead with a tilt on these because I'll have to go buy some bar stock. One. Uh, piece I figure I'll need about two foot of tilt stock for um, maybe four foot for each panel but that's pretty cheap stuff ten bucks a bar of that stuff for eight feet eight inch thick and I'll have to cut some rods that will connect to the one that's on the camper when I take the bolt out of here tilt them up and then it'll connect to the top and uh, I'll probably just use wing nuts for that because I'm not going to be moving down the road if I decide to tilt them. The only reason I think I would decide to tilt them is if I was camped some place for a, for a lengthy period of time in the winter when the sun is low on the horizon. But with 300 watts on this camper, we've been we've been getting along just fine with 200 watts, 300 watts. Even in the winter time, I probably will not have to tilt, but I'll have that option if it's if it's necessary. So I'm going to get all this bolted together, and then uh, next video you're going to see me up on the top of the camper, trying to determine exactly where and how to mount these brackets, the piece that actually mounts to the top of the camper. I'm not too thrilled about drilling into the roof, but that's about the only option I have. And then if I seal this well with die core over the bolts and so forth, I don't think it'll be a problem. Hundreds and hundreds of campers are out there set up that way. And uh, these Renogy mounts came with nice, nice uh, self-tapping bolts or screws designed for screwing these down to wood and that's what you, you use to mount them to the camper so each one of these mounts would have uh, two mounting holes into the roof of the camper so per side that would be four holes four four screws and I've set these bars up exactly the same way it's even though it's just one bar it's going to be four holes in there four screws holding each side so eight screws per panel holding it to the roof I think that'll be sufficient especially if I get lucky enough when I put the holes in the roof to hit one of the uh, cross beams or one of the uh, small studs that are in the roof of that camper it should be good to go so stay tuned and uh, return back for more videos on this solar installation on the uh, small fifth wheel camper Thanks for watching.